Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM World of Watson 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live at the Mandalay Bay for IBM World of Watson. It's the SiliconANGLE Media's theCUBE. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE with Dave Vellante, also co-founder of wikibon.com, research, head of research. Our next guest is Bob Lord, Chief Digital Officer of IBM Digital Business Group. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, thanks for having me. Congratulations, you're new to IBM, so let's get right into the your Chief Digital Officer. We kind of know what that is, we've, we've talked to some, but there's now a digital business group. So yeah. talk about your role. Can you clarify kind of what, you, what, what, what's your job? What's your objective? Yeah, so actually, so if you really look at sort of the core business that IBM has, IBM has traditionally been very focused sort of in the enterprise space. Um, and my job basically is to open up the digital storefront so that we actually bring cog cognitive and cloud computing basically to the masses, to bring it down to startups, to entrepreneurs, to developers. So we can actually take all of the great work that we've done with Watson, what we've done with IoT, what we've now done with cloud, and actually bring those services down to the, the developer and embed it into sort of the, the new startups and the entrepreneurs that are in the world. So most people have a chief digital officer to kind of make things work on the website, making sure yeah. they're pushing stuff out. This, is this a, a different thing in the sense that you're actually going to bring solutions to market? Or yeah, so is it a partnership integration <clears throat> with developers? Yeah, so look, I think, I think when everyone, chief digital officer <laughs> is a pretty broad term. The way we've defined it is very much in three phases. The first is it drives innovation at IBM, that's the first thing. The second is it's actually helping to actually improve the performance of IBM and improve the performance of our clients. And the last is that we keep the customer journey at the center of our solution base that we're driving. So think about the experience now that we have at IBM is going to be digitally enabled, whether it's on a mobile phone or whether it's on your desktop, there's not going to be a face-to-face -face seller to yeah. actually explain to you what IBM products and services can do for you. And the IBM products and services are pretty complex, right? They're solving yeah. really, really difficult problems in the world, whether it's in healthcare or cybersecurity. But how do you actually take the essence of what those solutions are and bring them down to solve marketing problems? How do you bring them down to solve you know, yeah. human resource problems? And we think we have an ability to do that. So my job is to package it up and make it, and get you, it out to clients. You know, Dave and I kind of, we're, we're old timers, and so we, you know, you've seen the movies before, all the different cycles of innovation, but one thing we were talking um, last time with Kevin Egan was, when he was on theCUBE at Interconnect, yeah. he also does in the digital group, was the role of the agency, how that's, the agencies used to do all this stuff right. for clients, but now there's much more of a developer focus. You mentioned packaging yeah. stuff up. The actu actually software development yeah. with data sets and data science, it's not as easy as throwing some HTML and yeah. some coded URLs and a, and a design, although that does work in some cases. Yeah. It's much more of a platform-like vibe going on with digital. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? And, and as customers try to figure out, you know, if they hire developers, how, if they hire data scientists, yeah. the design role, how yeah. does that all fit into well, that look, journey? Well, I look, think, I think the great news is, I think the tools that, and actually, it's, it's beyond developers, it's almost like builders, yeah. okay? We're starting to attract builders to come in and actually create new business units, new business, and solve problems that way. So the great thing about the component of codes that are coming out, they're very user-friendly and they're very easy to use, right? So the next generation of kids that are growing up, they know HTML5. They know how all this component stuff works, so it's sort of like that's their second language. So we actually can just sort of advance how we present ourselves to this new builder society and embed IBM solutions within that builder society. So it's a very different sort of approach that we've ever, ever taken before. So you have to now think of what's the developer journey? The developer journey is they want to be fun. They want to have yeah. fun, they want to interact, they want to play with code, they want to develop something, they want to have an impact on the world. So we have to present our solutions in a way that it's playful. And I think you see a lot of the successful sort of development revolutions that are going on is sort of motivating kids and, and you know, young developers to really go after game-like experiences um, and I think that that's how it's yeah. the key. Make it IBM playful, that's, yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah. So th you're the third chief digital officer we've had on today. Yeah. Uh, we had the CDO from uh, Staples, and then an, an IOT case from Scheffler Group, an automotive company, yep. and now you. You know, there are some similarities, but three dramatically different sort of yeah. agendas, but, but you laid it out nicely with your three pieces, I mean, that, that I think is similar. But the routes to market, 
really yeah. were different. So talk about your sort of routes to market and how that's evolving. Yeah, so, so look, I think, I think the idea that we have to expose IBM in a digital way where it's self-consuming, so taking a lot of the principles that have been applied to the B2C world and bring them to the B2B world. That's mm -hmm. basically what we're doing, okay? So we go and we shop on Amazon. It's very intuitive, right? It works for us. It recommends things to us that we normally wouldn't be thinking about based on other people's buying behaviors. Taking a lot of those principles and applying it to the B2B world experience, right? So what are you trying to solve? Use cognitive computing to help us in that discovery process yeah. because the biggest problem we have in the B2B world is it's messy, it's confusing. One data path doesn't look like another data path, another data set doesn't look like another data set. So my job and my team's job is to figure out how do we actually make yeah. this in a simplified fashion. It's funny, we were just talking about the quote that Jeff Emmelt, the CEO of GE, um, said last week, he's in, uh, talking about IoT earlier. He yeah. said, I went to bed as an industrial company and woke up as a software company. Right. Similar thing going on here with, with content, but I want to twist that around and ask you a question on that. If I had rephrased that and said, hey, I went to bed a, <laughs> went to bed a, um, a content company uh, provider, now I'm a full-blown media business. Yeah as companies are becoming more and more media companies yeah. themselves, similar analog of being software driven. So companies see this social and they see this new democratization platform going on where they have to actually build their own media capabilities. Yeah. Which means a lot of those operational things that they used to outsource yeah. to agencies or have to come in-house. So how do companies become a media company? Or yeah, so, so look, I think we've, done, we've launched something called Think Marketing and we actually got it out very quickly. And what we did was we consolidated all of our thought capital into one property. Um, the great news about Think Marketing was we shut down all the other little marketing silos that we had, whether they were websites or interaction sites, and we funneled everyone through this one site. We've not only put IBM content on that, but we've also put third party content and we put guest sort of content on it. Okay, so if I can think about it, it's almost like the mini Huffington Post for the marketer. Because there's one reason why, two reasons why people come to IBM. They come for intelligence to learn something, yep. or they come surgically to look for a particular product on us. So we wanted to sort of get that first pillar and say, okay, let, let me really make the marketer, have the, ed, the marketer educated. Now, the cool thing is, as somebody's consuming that content, we're just taking principles from the B2C world, and we're now changing the content. We're learning more about that, that yeah. potential user, and we're serving up then, Watson is actually making recommendations about what products they should look at. Yeah. And then once you click on a product, then it's actually adding more products to it. So you're helping to guide through the discovery that a marketer would want to have. And hey, we're you're making it engaging. Pleasure. You're making it engaging. Yes. And then yes. providing a progression option for them to yeah. breadcrumb their way to <laughs> Value. And, and, and honestly, you and I, we all have that expect, expectation when we go online that something is going to help us with that from our B2C world. Yeah. So all we're really doing is taking the B2C and we're trying to apply it to B2B. Well, IBM has a lot of good content. I mean, you, that's, yeah. that's, that's an advantage. It's, you got to manage it and it's going to find it. But there have been efforts you know, throughout history, <laughs> and with, certainly within our industry, of entities to organizations trying to sort of become a content company yeah. for marketing purposes. So you got to walk that balance. Yeah. You mentioned third party content. What are your thoughts on that sort of hybrid approach? Yeah, so look, I think, <laughs> I, feel, I feel pretty strongly that the new world of marketing is all about content and it's content distribution. So in legacy, what we've had is we've had campaign marketing managers that would send out a campaign and let that campaign just hang out there and hope that someone would interact with that campaign. It's got to be tied with intellectual capital so that you're yeah. giving value exchange back to that potential user. So through a marketing hub and sort of this ecosystem, we have this anchor of published content. That published content then serves as our marketing arm and our marketing campaigns. So when someone actually goes to look at another piece of content, it comes back in. My digital sellers then It's your arsenal we, of content. Yeah. You fire it to where you need to fire it. And then the, the digital sellers come on board and they have context. They're using that yeah. content again and they're used, so it's this viral ecosystem that sits together and, and, how and it you, reinforces our brand. And how are you enabling that ecosystem? Yeah, so we have, we have partners that we, we're launching at somewhere between 20 and 23 pieces of new content every day on the site. Um, and based on those contributors and what's out there, there's enough rich content there. That's a, and if you come back and visit me again, I know you've been there before, so I repurpose that content. So we're using IBM content, third party content, and then we have sort of guests. I think you have some cute content on, on there too, I believe. Yep. Them, I think yep. you guys have some content in there. Well, I want to bring this of up. Of course. I think why, 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 <laughs> it's, it's all free. <laughs> Use it, it's great, it's great discovery. <laughs> You'll get a nice progression off these great provocative videos. Um, but I want to bring up something that you said, because this is interesting. Dave and I riff on this all the time. And as the world shifts to much more different horizontal fabric, you're talking about discovery in a whole new yep. non-linear way, if you will. 
Um, the old way was trap users, get SEO yeah. optimization. So you're seeing companies tried things like SEO gamification on Google search. You've seen, oh, we'll just hire a journalist to be and win the audience. But the audience understood that, well, once you go to the vendor supplier side, you're really not an independent journalist. So those have been failed kind of yeah. tracks because there's no authenticity to it. Right. Your strategy is a little bit different. You're saying, hey, we're going to be IBM, fully disclosed, but we're also going to understand your needs and give you aggregated content, yeah. not trying to head fake you. Yeah. Is that kind of, did I get yeah, that no, right? Yeah, no, that's the strategy too. And I look, I think we have the permission as a brand. Right, people believe that IBM has a very definite point of view in the world. So there's a bit of a trust factor there yep. that the information I'm going to get from IBM, there's a trust yep. relationship with IBM. I'm not sure every brand could actually try to claim right. that. So we're sort of, I'm, I'm trying to leverage yeah. the best of the IBM brand as we go out and launch into it's the digital the, space. the notion of trust, I mean, you can aggregate content as long as they understand you're not trying to say this is important, read it yeah. from a third party because a head fake, yeah. the trust issue on social is no one really talks about it, but it, the transparency yes. levels are highly friction communication among peer groups. Yeah. Once you lose that trust, yeah. Look, it, I think, I, and the way that, and the way the site's, um, it's got trending. It's like one of the most popular articles. The typical stuff that you would normally see, what the experts recommend, and then it's the Watson engine underneath. So there's no bias there. It's about volume and people sort of picking that up. So you know, we're taking a page from the New York Times and the Huffington Post and what's been successful. So that's how there. you maintain so your stewardship of that trust. Yes. So exactly. I got to, I got to get. And if you uh, violate it, they're no, not going to exactly. come back. Exactly. No it's it's the wild west of. Yeah. <laughs> so Bob, I want to ask you kind of a, take a little walk down memory lane and kind of project kind of the situation now. Obviously, go back to the web. You saw the first you know generation, the Yahoo's of the world. You involved in uh, the AOL, but yeah. you know Akamai came on the scene with great caching of images for Yahoo's dial-up websites. And then you've just seen the URL, the search, all that stuff's happening, email marketing. But now you have a whole new infrastructure developing. So I want to ask you, any new uh, innovations that you see that you guys are betting on? I mean, you know, you saw the DNS hack this past week in IoT, it's basically yeah. a DDoS hack, old school technique, but you're seeing infrastructure needs to up its game a little bit because the user experience is expecting push notifications, yeah. they're expecting mobile. What's your thoughts on the, this new fabric, this new environment that's out there? Yeah, so, so it, look, I think I, the great news about the new fabric that's out there is we're going into this API economy, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to have startups and entrepreneurs start businesses by snacking APIs and basically figuring out the, how the Lego blocks come together to actually move their business forward. So they're not going to be building content management systems, they're going to be snacking APIs around that. You know, you look at some great startups yeah. in, the, in the commerce space, and you go online, you can basically take a piece of code and you have a shopping cart yeah. in five minutes, right? That's a snackable piece of API. So you're going to be building in this That's API So they can economy. leverage, they don't have to build it. They the don't point have to build is, it. they're slinging APIs around rather than... Right, and then you're basically, so if you're a smart entrepreneur at this point, what you'd be doing is you'd be going out getting the best APIs that you could to actually support your business and then overlaying the important piece, which is the cognitive computing piece, which is the intelligence on the data so you can outmaneuver your competition. So Buffett Chiano was just on talking about uh, Watson Ads, new yep. system, yep. and he's ch turning it from an impression-based concept yep to an endpoint that was usually a banner ad or call to action hero area, whatever you want to call it, into a transactional yeah. interface for relationship, yep. two-way dialogue. Is that part of your group in, in that, getting that kind of stuff going on? Is this where the digital fits in? Is that a different yeah, product? So, we, so listen, there's, there's six different business groups at IBM. We're sort of the digital storefront, right? So I would take Bob's product and put it out on my storefront. But the cool thing about what Bob has talked about, we have talked about interactive ads and using the damn HTML format for advertising for the last 10 years, and we're finally at that point where that ad is going to provide value to a consumer in a very different yeah. way. Whether it's about you know, recipes on soup, whether it's about you know, flu season, but we're actually using intelligence with the ads, so the cognitive ads is all about that interface, and again, the value piece, the value exchange piece. And you're dog fooding that in your own, sorry, dog fooding yeah, champagne yeah, yeah. sipping Eating in it. your own. Yeah. Uh, digital properties, yep. right? You're embedding Watson, Watson. Yeah, and we've actually, where we've actually done you know, cognitive targeting, we've sort of seen about a 15% lift in the effectiveness of the ads because we're very targeted on what the, who the user is and what that experience is that we're delivering to them, and we see a lift on that. Now, we're going to expand that further, but yeah. it's all about the insight that we can get on somebody and understand their behavior before we actually get them in. That's why you know, all, this, yeah. all this talk about ad blocking and everything else that's out there on the web, it's because the value exchange has been so yeah. bad Banner that nobody wants years, these yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, you, I yeah. don't mind ads coming to me as long as they give me some kind of value and I do well, something Well, even retargeting, although it produces great numbers, it can
can be an annoying because I go to a website, Hilton's, no rooms available. Next thing I'm seeing Hilton is, I already know there's no rooms available. <laughs> right. It's like, I, I, don't show me that anymore. Yeah. You know, we should know, you know that. We should like, know that. I just should know that. That's a Watson no innovation. That's so right. I want to ask you about the innovation because we talk about, uh, when you talk about like um, what you're saying, APIs, you're assuming an ecosystem because yeah. the key to success in that market is access to open and open APIs or in open source in general. What's the startup strategy? How are you guys building the ecosystem? How do people engage with IBM? Uh, any new information? What's your thoughts? Do you have a vision on that? Yeah, no, look, I, I think, look, we're, f we're starting with the core developer. Uh, that's really where it all is all starting. And I, and I think IBM's had a very long history of working with developers in the enterprise space, um, in the ISV world. And I think now we're sort of getting, as I said before, at this builder. What, who is that builder? Um, and we now have work to do to show developers how simple it is to use IBM technology. The way it's componentized, the way that you actually build a Watson conversation app. It's very simple to use. That's our job right now that we need to be on. So the first step is to get at the core developer. The second step then is the startups will start to come because those developers are normally within those startups yeah, yeah. and they start to embed the technology within it. The other place we're going to go is universities. Right, get to those, those computer science engineers, have them understand what Watson is. Some of them don't remember Watson being on Jeopardy because they weren't even born. Um, so some of those kids need to understand what Watson cable. can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an education piece, but it's also our ability of putting a fabric out there and a set of APIs that interlock together that show how they can actually have an impact well, and it comes back to that comment you made. I mean, it sounds tongue in cheek, but to make IBM playful. Yes. Right? That's exactly. what that world wants. I mean, the Alpha Modus is a great example. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. How familiar you are with them, but yeah. they've been on a couple of I think you did now. his talk with them on the innovation. Yeah, no, no. Stage no. Alpha that. Modus is a great example yeah. of where he, he, you know, he really took Watson and he sort of created it to help him predict Alpha at the end of the day. And he's seen a 500 percent improvement in his predictability of how the market's going to close. I mean, that's phenomenal, right? right? We want it. Yeah, <laughs> but, but think about that. That's a really hard application to sort of take Watson to do, right? Right. Watson can solve the mundane task on a day. Like you see Staples actually embedding Watson in their easy button, right? That's just a, that's just a conversation app, but the efficiency that Staples gets from that and the ordering that the, the volume of ordering increase they get from that is very, very powerful. So that's applying Watson in a very simple sort of application, which is where we have to show the world. We have to show the world not only is Watson simple to use, but it's better than any other, other, other AI solution because it goes after dark data. It brings in data that you normally wouldn't be able to index before, whether that's imagery, whether that's video, whether that's conversation. And Watson can get at that data like other AI solutions can't. And, and it's simple to use. So, you know, you take yeah. this, look, we've solved these really big problems in healthcare. We've solved these really big problems in cybersecurity with Watson. You know, now we want to do is take those learnings and apply it to the simple solutions in life. A lot of our competitors are coming up the other way. They're trying to solve simple problems and they really haven't solved the big, hard problems yet. Mm. So and it's a pretty exciting spot to be And if they're in an ecosystem too, they get, they get camaraderie, they get social, they get peers, and that's called distribution for their yes. solution. Yes, That you guys are yeah. offering, I know it's some go to market. Uh, opportunities. Yeah. I'll give you the final word uh, for the folks watching. Where can people learn more? Are you guys going to be on the road? Is there other events you're doing? Yeah, we How have a, people out, out yeah, we have a big uh, we have a big developer conference coming up uh, first week in November in San Francisco. Um, so I'd ask uh, folks to join us there. Um, it's going to be a very show me hands on. The world of Watson developer November conference 9th one? on November 9th. Yep. Okay. Um, you guys are welcome to join us there. Um, and then we actually have a follow up event that's going to be happening up in India, another developer conference in India. Um, and then we're probably kind of back in North America. So we've got a lot of activity in the development space uh, coming up in, in 2017. And you guys have always been um, progressive. IBM's always been uh, on the web. You guys were there early, always innovating. Same true for digital. Can you share yeah. for folks that are watching? You're yeah. new to IBM, so share what's, the, what's it like inside the curtain there. Yeah, so look, I think where you are from, a, from an inside view, um, think marketing is our first launch to go after the, the marketer. You're going to see a bunch of digital hubs being launched um, around our ecosystem to get at particular buyers, leading with content first and then product discovery after. Yeah. So you're going to see a lot of that. The marketplace will also be available for startups. Yeah. So if you have an IBM certified product, your product would be able to get on our marketplace for distribution. So we're also giving that also to a startups community. Which pretty and giving about. them the consumer feel, that's the new, yes. the new, new, the yeah. new goodness. Yeah. All right, Bob Lord, Chief Digital Officer at IBM. You're watching theCUBE, bringing you the digital coverage here, non-linear TV on, on the ground floor here at Mandalay Bay for World of Watson. We'll be right back with more. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back.